Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, do this now. Uh, so when you were making waves, well, when we were making waves in our springtime lab, um, what could you control? What could we control? And what could we not control? We talked about this yesterday. Think about it. Okay. Look in your notes and answer these questions. So uh, once you've given these a chance, let's go and talk about them. All right. So, uh, so what could you control? So you could control um, how, fa how fast you're moving your hand, yep. right? You could go fast, you could go slow, and um, we called that high and low frequency. Right. Um, now, what else could you control? Moving oh, yeah. Control? How far you moved your hand. Yeah, so you can control those two things. Yep. Now, um, what could we not control? Well, we calculated the speed that the wave traveled. Um, we calculated the speed of the wave, right? Yeah. We couldn't control that. We calculated it. Right. So we don't have control over how fast that wave is moving through the medium, but we do, as the source, have control over the frequency and what is, I think it's the amplitude, how far you moved your hand up and back. Now, what we did is we changed our position, went from eight meters to four meters, mm -hmm. and that changed the speed because it changed the properties of the medium. Mm -hmm. But if you're in one spot, eight meters, uh, it's going to stay the same velocity because the tightness of the slinky. Yeah, so ultimately, uh, what could we control? How fast we moved our hand and how far we moved it? We could not control the speed. That's right. You can't. You can't control the speed. Okay, so it takes two things to draw a wave. Okay, let's see if there's more can do this. We can do this. Okay, so it's all in the elbow. Okay, it's all in the elbow. Here we go. 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 How do I look? Looks great. Pretty good. Okay, so it takes two things to draw uh, my wave. Um, now, the first one was me moving my elbow up and down, right? Yep. Okay, how fast, and I guess technically how far I moved it. Yeah. Right? But me moving my elbow. And what was the other thing? It's how fast you were walking. It's how fast I'm walking, right? Okay, so um, that is sort of like my frequency, I guess, right? How fast I moved my hand up and down if I was going slower, yep. faster, right? And then the, the speed is me walking. Yep. Uh, now, let's go ahead and label some wave parts in this. Now, I'm going to do my best I can to find the middle here. Kind of sight down. I always yeah. sight down. There you go. You can yeah, see where it goes. like right in here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, from here, that's our equilibrium point. I'm going to go ahead and label that EQ for equilibrium. And it asks us to label the crest and the trough. So, my crests are these high points. And the troughs are the bottom parts right here. Boop, 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 boop. Yep. Okay. Got to sense. know your wave parts. Okay. Uh, equilibrium, the position of the undisturbed medium. Why don't you um, go ahead and show them that? Yeah, so so here is our uh, slinky, and it's just chilling, right? Undisturbed, is, it's at equilibrium. It's undisturbed. Now, if I want to disturb it, Oh, I missed. Okay, now it's not an equ equilibrium anymore, right? Because I disturbed you it. You disturbed that medium. With a thwack. All right, so equilibrium is the undisturbed medium, and we're representing it by this line here going through the middle of my wave. Amplitude. See if you can draw the amplitude. I'm going to go ahead and draw mine in. That's an amplitude. And that's an amplitude. It's the maximum displacement from equilibrium. So how yeah, far you move from, your hand. And from equilibrium, right? So the maximum displacement, how far you moved your hand. Yes, okay, so pretty straightforward for that part. Um, the amplitude, the size of the bump um, of a wave is proportional to the energy it carries. Ooh, you applied a force through a distance. Want to yep. show them on the thing? Yeah, let's see if I can do this. If I move my hand just a little bit, <laughs> then I get small amplitude waves. I didn't do much work. They're not going to carry much energy. If I send a larger, if I move my hand farther <laughs> at the same frequency, I get much larger amplitude and there's much more energy traveling back and forth because I did more work. 
Excellent, excellent. Okay, so amplitude, amplitude of wave is proportional to the energy it carries. How much you move your hand there, um, uh, the force over the displacement yeah. is boom. Okay, straightforward. I like it. Huh, okay, period. Uh, is the time it takes for one cycle. That's moving your hand back and forth once. Mm -hmm. Back and forth and back and forth yep, and yep, back yep. and forth. Okay, and then we've got uh, the units of frequency. So uh, these ones were, uh, the period was seconds per cycle, and, cycles per second. Yeah. Okay, they're opposites. And the official, you know, units for uh, frequency is hertz, uh, represented by HZ. Named after some guy. Yeah, but you know, I, I rarely use Hertz. I don't think I used it once in AP this year as I was teaching this. You know, this is really more, it, descri it gives us more of a picture of what's going on. Cycles right. per second. Yeah, plus in calculations, you can cancel and see what the units of the answer yes, are. Yes, yes. And when you think about cycles per second, um, you want to think about um, for every second, how many, how many claps you have going on, right? right? So if you have a high frequency, it'd be like, Right? Yeah. And then slower, a low frequency, right? And that high frequency is a little bit of time, small amount of time between, between. and the low frequency is a lot of time in between. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, wavelengths. Let's see if you can draw your wavelengths on here. Ooh, it's represented by the Greek letter lambda. Lambda. <clears throat> okay, so from here, one cycle to here, is one wavelength. Okay. And then I could follow this along here. Okay, that too would be one wavelength. Yeah. And then as I move up, that would also be a wavelength. And so you can see how you can you can calculate one wavelength anywhere along this Yeah, if you start your hand at the bottom and you go up and back, that's one wavelength. If you start at equilibrium, you go up, down, and back, that's one wavelength. If you start at the top, you go down and back, up, that's one wavelength. Yeah. One cycle. So, uh, oh, and then the units here. So, um, we have meters per cycle, which is which is accurate. Yeah. Um, however, uh, we will oftentimes drop the cycle and we'll just use meters because we know that it's, it's the definition of the wavelength is one cycle. Yeah. So it's a little redundant. So we, we will just use meters most of the time. If you put cycles in there, no harm, no foul. <laughs> well, it, it's good in calculations. Yes. Because yeah. if the units come out, you did it right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, ooh, there are two ways of looking at the speed of a wave. Yep. Good thing for you is you are familiar with one of them. Yeah. Let's talk about that first one. Okay, so it says how far. So this is the first way of talking about um, talking about uh, the speed of a wave. Yeah. So how far it goes in a certain amount of time. Speed is distance over time. Yeah, and yesterday we had eight meters divided by how much time it took to go eight meters, and that gave us the speed of the wave in meters per second. Yeah. So uh, let's see. The question up there. Is, Hi, boys and girls. Make sure it's still going. Yeah, we're good. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so speed, uh, it says, what is distance and time for waves? Um, okay, so distance for regular is distance. Now, for, for a wave, the distance between two is the wavelength. Yep. So I'm going to put wavelength there, and then um, the time, well, I, I kind of think we could use either the period or, or period, but I'm going to go ahead and use period now, especially because it looks like a T, so it's easy to remember. Well, it's speed is distance over time, and mm -hmm. the distance of a wave is a wavelength, and the time interval is a period. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, okay, so, so we have that speed is equal to distance over time, and then our second way of, of speaking about uh, there are two ways of looking at the speed. Of the <laughs> Boys and girls, anybody hurt? That does it. I'm not putting it back in the tripod. Is it just slipping out of there? Yeah, and I don't know why. I think this. I, I think it's broken. Yeah. Right there. There's a crack. All right, we good. Um, okay, so our next thing is uh, this. This equation. <laughs> everything is fine. We're excited. It's <laughs> excitement in class today. And the relationship between, okay, so let me start over there. 
So we have our speed is equal to distance over time. That's the first way we, we can talk about the speed of a wave. And the second way is the wavelength over the period. Yeah. And we have that here, wavelength over the period. And so this is just the relationship between velocity, wavelength, and the period. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually write those over here for us. I'm gonna say speed is equal to D over T. And I'm also gonna say velocity is equal to the wavelength over the uh, the period. Yep. Now speed and velocity, technically one is a vector, but you know, they're, they represent, they have the same units, meters yes, per second. All right, shall we Let's move take... over to our... Now here's an analogy. This is a, a call a moving sidewalk. If you look at the walls, go ahead. Notice the walls are moving. That's because the person is on the sidewalk in the airport. Some airports are really large mm -hmm. and people get tired of walking. And so they can just stand or and put their hurry. bags down. Or you can walk. And if you walk on this, you'll go faster. This is about one meter per second. That's about average walking speed. Yeah. And the thing about this is that um, it's going at a particular speed. Now, let's say it's one meter per second. <clears throat> if one person gets on every second, how far apart will they be if it's going one meter per second? Okay, so if every one meter someone gets, they're, they're going to be one meter apart. They'll be one meter apart. Right. If it's going one meter per second and a person gets on every two seconds, how far apart will they be? Two meters? Yeah, and so... You are putting waves into the slinky when you move your hand back and forth. And it go, travels at a particular uh, velocity. Ooh, just like how this thing travels at a specific set velocity. Exactly. Okay. You're putting waves in. If you put a waves in with a long time between them, oh. the waves are going to be farther apart, a longer wavelength. If you move your hand back and forth, that's like them getting on very every one, much quickly. Every one second. The wavelength would be short. Sure. It's like if people, if it was very busy and you got a person getting on every half second oh. and it's going a meter per second, how fast are they going to be? Uh, they're going to be on that. Well, it's going to still go one meter per second. The pandemic must be over. They're yeah. not social distancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I heard, what I heard you say, Mr. Boykin, is that the velocity is unchanged. That's right. It's one meter per second, and the rate at which those people are getting on, whether it's every second, half a second, or two seconds, that's kind of like the frequency, which has to do with the. Well, time it's the period. It, the period. I'm sorry, which has to do with how with how frequently they're getting on there as well. It does. Yes, okay. it does. They're related, and that determines how far apart they are. Determines yes. what the wavelength is. That's exactly right. Okay, so then let me go ahead and go to my next one here. This is just silly, boys and girls. Here's the moving sidewalk. Oh, in an airport. This is called Bored in the Airport. <laughs> College tours found the best use for airport, I think, free time? The Louisville Swimming and Diving Team. That's fun. I love it. Okay, so moving right along here. So wavelength depends on the speed of the wave and the frequency um, or the period. And so, oh, okay, so we have- This is our equation over there just solved for wavelength. Yeah, okay, so that looks like this, right? So we have V equals our wavelength over the period. I just yeah. wrote that right here. And we <clears throat> solve for the wavelength. Yep. So times by T. TV. Time. Oh, TV. I like that. Mr. Boykin has so many good, so many good little acronyms there. I guess it's a lowercase. Let's not get it confused with volume or something. And what this says is that if the velocity of the is the same as the period changes, so does the wavelength. If the time in between pulses is longer 
the wavelength gets longer. If the people are getting on over a longer two, every two seconds, longer wavelength. On every one second, shorter wavelength. Ah, okay, so like more this, more this. It's direct uh, relationship. Now, yeah. how about that other equation? Well, uh, what's the relationship between period and velocity? Okay. They're inverse of each other, right? Like this, right? Period is equal, equal to one over frequency, so. I, I think yesterday you guys <coughs> saw it like this, but it's the same it's thing, the same right? Thing. You can flip those. And so we are just taking this right here and we're putting that in for it. Yeah. So it looks like this. So instead of T, we've got one over F, V. Oh, I'm going to make that a V then. It occurs to me, Ms. Moore, what should we do over here with our equations? We've got velocity as wavelength over oh, we frequency. Should, we should probably add in the, uh, the inverse relationship, right? Yeah, wavelength over period, I should say. Um, and so velocity is wavelength times frequency. Yeah, so uh, uh, wavelength times the frequency, like that yep. one? Yep, yep. Um, <coughs> oh yeah, so uh, we just took this one and we, we added this one. And you right should here. probably put this period is equal to one over the frequency there somewhere. Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and go like this. That's where that comes right? from. And Those are all the equations you need. And hopefully you caught how I did this, right? <coughs> this is one over T, yep. one over the period, and one over the period is equal to the frequency right there. You just substitute. I just substitute that in there. Okay, so. You know, do you have to memorize this all? No, what you really, all you really have to do is, is remember speed equals distance over time. You can get this. As long as you understand that, you can get this. Yeah, so, the, the key awesome. is you need to be able to use them. Yeah. Okay, so what's our next thing here? Oh, we have a lovely practice problem. Okay. Let me erase this down. <coughs> Sound wave has a frequency of 262 cycles per second and a wavelength of 121.29 meters per cycle. Find the velocity of the wave. Which equation are we going to use? We've got wavelength and velocity. I beg your pardon. We've got wavelength and frequency. We want velocity. We want velocity. We've got wavelength and frequency. So that's going to be that this one, one right, right there. Here, yes, right? ma'am. Okay, so velocity equals wavelength times frequency. And our wavelength is 1.29? 1.29 meters per cycle. Meters technically per cycle. I'm multiplying that by my frequency. 262 is... cycles per second. These cancel out. That's a good thing. Thank you, sir, because our units are going to be meters per second. 1.29 times 262, and I get, I get 338 meters per second. Simple, yes? Yeah. Okay, so that was A. That was for the velocity. So there's two ways of looking at speed of waves. B asks how much time to travel 91.4 meters. We got the velocity. Okay. So which equation is this going to be? So we want to know time, so that's going to be this one right here, right? Yep. And this, like we said, is just like the velocity. I'm going to go ahead and boy and flip those. I'm going to put the T here and the speed down here. So T equals D, and I'm just going to put V. Um, uh, cause we're trying to find the time, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And how, how much time, how much time to travel on 91.4 meters? 91.4 meters. That's my distance. And 338 meters per second. We got that from up there. Okay. So 91.4 divided by 338. And I get 0.27 seconds. Bada boom. Yep. That's, that's pretty fast. <clears throat> well, 338 meters per second is really fast. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, and then lastly, find the period. Okay, which equation are we gonna use, boys and girls? Well, you know, we've got... We, I, think I, th I like that. One. I think you'd use that bottom one because We've got the frequency, and we might have made a mistake on our calculation, so yeah. I think we should use that I equation. was going to say, because we could, we could technically use some of the other equations, I, I believe, but let's go ahead and, and whenever it wants to find the period and it gives you the frequency, just flip-flop it. Yeah. So we're going to say 1 over the frequency. Our frequency was 2. 262 cycles per second. Well, Miss Warren can't ever spell cycles. Okay, so then we got, so just 1 over that, right? 1 divided by... 262 and I get 0 0.0038 0 0.0038 and I'm going to flip these units and make it seconds 
per cycle. There you go. And I think you can also say 262x the negative one, right? You can, yeah. Yeah, so if, if, if for whatever reason that's like what you're used to with your math class, you can totally do that. Okay? Boom! So, uh, there it is. Another one. Okay, so a sound wave produced by a clock chime is heard um, 550 meters away and uh, 1.5 seconds later. What is the speed of sound of air? Okay, Which gonna... equation are we going to use for this one? What equation do We've we got use? how far the clock is and the time it takes for the sound to get to you. Okay, Which one? That smells like this one. I agree. Okay, so speed, <clears throat> take away that A. So speed equals D over T. And then what is the speed of sound in air? Is that what the question yes, is? Yes, it is, yeah. Okay, so our distance was 515 meters divided by 1.50 seconds. And 515 divided by 1.50, I get 343. 343 meters per second. Uh, it's an important number. Yes, it is. Okay, um, the wave has a frequency of that many cycles per second. What is the period? Gives us the frequency, we want the period. Let's go to our, our, our old reliable equation here. So one over, oh sorry, we want the, uh, We've Wait. got the frequency, oh. we want the period. I just flip flop these. Yeah. Okay, and our frequency is 436. Yep. Cycles per second. So we're going to say 1 divided by 436, and I get 0 0.0023. I take this and I flip it seconds. And see that 436 cycles per second is a pretty high frequency. Yeah, that's So it's fast. going to have a very small period, so that makes sense. I mean, you try, it, it, and this is the time in between the yeah. seconds per second. Try clapping your hands 436 <laughs> times in one second. <laughs> <clears throat> when we get into sound, the, the, we'll see examples of this. Okay, what is the wavelength? Okay, well, I know uh, I've got wavelength here. So you we've know, got period frequency and... I've, I've got frequency period. I might have miscalculated this, though. I'm going to use what was given to me. I like that. This, this one right here. So, um, and I've got the, the speed, right, the velocity. So I'm going to use this equation. And I want to know the wavelength. So I'm going to divide by the frequency. Those cancel. Okay, my velocity is 343 meters per second. And then I'm gonna divide by my frequency, which is 436. That's gonna be a little less than one meter. Okay. That's gonna be about three quarters of a meter. 343 divided by 436, and I get 0. 0.79. 0. 0.79 meters. And technically, it's meters per, uh, these seconds cancel out, middle, middle, meters per. Cycle. Cycle. Okay. <clears throat> now, what does that mean? That means that the wavelength for this thing, if it's a meter stick, 79 centimeters, uh, uh, seven, 0.79 meters is right here. So from here to here, that's how long that wavelength is. Cool. Cool. All right. What do we have next, Miss Moore? Okay. Oh. The speed of sound is 343 meters per second at 20 degrees Celsius in air. Yep. And that's so that's a solved. that's a constant mm -hmm. at and, 20 degrees Celsius. And sometimes we'll ask you questions and we won't give you a velocity and we'll tell you that that the temperature of the air is 20 degrees Celsius and so that you know that you can use that number. So put that down in your notes and put a box around it. Mm -hmm. It's important. Okay. Okay. What? is an echo. 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 What the heck is an echo? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, let's keep that in presentation mode. Okay, echo over here. And... Turn that duck sucker up. We should just yell as loud as we can. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, <laughs> this is, no, Alex, let's just yell as loud as we can and see if Come on, like, Alex, like, Alex, come on. Just, just scream. <laughs> Ready? Wait, what is it? Yeah. Ah! 
Oh my god, that's sick. Can we clap? I bet that will work. No, look, I'll be oh. men. Go, go, go! Cool. On the count of three, up you men. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Three. Oh, stop, sorry. Okay. Uh oh, I got we got one more for you. Check this out. Check this girl. Oh. Three echoes. I would pause right there. Yeah. So totally groovy. What is an echo? Well, see that big wall in the background. Uh huh. It's exactly what it is. It acts like a wall, or it is a wall. So what is an echo? An echo is a sound that travels to a surface, bounces off, reflects, um, and then uh, comes back to the source. So those people, Alex was standing here, uh -huh. <laughs> and Alex and his crew yelled something and that that sound wave traveled here hit the wall and then came back and reflected back that's what an echo is so in in an echo sound uh sound travels two times the distance to the wall back and forth i mean that makes sense right yeah. it's got to right? go down there it's got to reflect it's got to come back yeah so you can hear it so that's totally groovy so our distance is just times two here um so let's give it a shot a hiker shouts toward a vertical cliff 685 meters away. The speed of sound is 343 meters per second. How much time is heard before the how much time before the echo is heard? Well, if the cliff is 685 meters away, how far does the sound travel? 685 meters away? Yeah. Well, two times that, right? Yeah, it's got to go 685 to the wall, it's got to come 685 back. So 685 times two, I get this many meters, that's a seven. So the total distance the, town, the sound travels back and forth is that. Okay. And, and then, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. Uh, and then how much time? Okay, so I, what we'll use, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use this one right here. Um, we're going to boink and flip these two, so time equals D over S. Um, and let's just plug it in here. So our distance is meters divided by our speed of sound is 343 meters per second. And Maybe about a third of a second. Uh, these, these units cancel. I'm left with second, which is good. Okay, so 1370 oh, divided by 343, three, and I get... Uh, uh, I'm gonna just gonna call it four seconds. Okay. Uh, is it four or point four? Uh, let me check my work there. Oh, it's thirteen seventy. No, it's four. Get? I, I was didn't see the zero. Four. Oh, this guy right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, four seconds. Four seconds. Sweet. Okay. So, how much time before the echo is heard? So, if I scream that ah! and I'm not far away. It'll take me four seconds for it to be heard. Yep. Um, the wavelength is 700, point, sorry, 0.75 meters. 0.750 oh, meters. Um, what is the frequency? Which equation are you gonna use, boys and girls? Hmm. We got the velocity. Okay, we got the velocity, and we've got the wavelength, and we want the frequency. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one right here. Yep. So V equals this times this. I divide by the wavelength. Those cancel. So frequency equals the velocity, which is 343. 343 meters per second divided by the wavelength, which I 0. just 0. 0.750. 0. 0.75. I did not calculate that. Excuse me. No, notice how for wavelength they put meters here. Yeah. Okay. And then 343 divided by 0. 0.750, and I get 457. I look at my units here. Now, technically, like we said, this is cycles. If we flip these cycles over meters, it's cycles per second. Yeah. Second, right there. How are we doing? This stuff uh, not over your head, I don't think. I feel like this stuff is good. I feel like they're killing it. Okay. Um, so, a couple of things here. Waves of light require no medium to travel. Light is strange stuff. Where do we? Where do we? See, where does our light come from? El Sol. <laughs> the sun, right? Yeah. And so 
there is nothing in space. It's a vacuum, right? And so um, waves of light require no medium to travel through. This is called electromagnetic radiation. EMR. Um, the speed of light in empty space, aka in space, empty space, okay, is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Write this number down and box it as well. Speed of light has its is so important. It has its own symbol. That's C. Mm-hmm. And so the speed of light in empty space is that. Here is a question. The distance from the sun to the earth is 1.50 times 10 to the 11 meters. How long does it take light to go, <laughs> go from the sun to the earth? So the distance is... Like that, right? Yeah, and the speed of light was 3.0 times 10 to the eight. <clears throat> Did we tell them that it's C? What we did, it? yeah. See, okay. Okay, and that's just like velocity. That's like velocity. Right? So if you want to know time, which equation are we going to use? Uh, so we want to know time, speed. So V, we're going to use this one right here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to flip-flop these here. So T equals D over S. And I'm going to plug in 1.50 times 10 to the 11th meters divided by um, the speed, which is going to be... Eight meters per second. Bada boom. Okay, so I can just plug this in. Scientific notation. Okay, so 1.5 e to the 11th uh, divided by 3 e to the 8th. Boom. And I get 500. 500 seconds. Divide that by 60. How many minutes is that? Okay, if I divide it by 60... I get about, we'll call it eight, about eight minutes. Eight minutes. What does that mean? Well, that means that as you stare outside and look at the sun, don't look at the sun. Don't do that. <laughs> as you stare outside and you're receiving all the light rays from the sun, you're outside tanning, that, uh, those light waves, those, those waves of light are eight minutes old. That's right. Okay. When you look at the sun, you're not seeing the sun now. You're seeing it eight minutes mm -hmm. ago. If you look at stars in space. Even further away, right? Yeah. Yep, you're looking back um, in time. Because the sun's a star. Yep. Okay, so page, for homework tonight, page 335, numbers one through four. Go get them.